what's up guys welcome back to my channel today i wanted to talk about another one of my favorite artists the one the only the legendary the voice of our generation one of the greatest singers of all time whitney houston and this video i want to look back on whitney houston's career and i really wanted to i want to look back on a what ifs like what if whitney houston was still here in 2020 how would the last eight years of her career have played out if she was still here with us you know because Whitney Houston her career and especially after she passed and I looked into it and I looked at all the documentaries especially the newer ones that came out her career trajectory has always been interesting to me because you think about it it's like Whitney Houston she had it all she had the looks she had the talent she had the voice she had that image but when you really look at it you look at the documentaries you look at the layers you look at who she really was and you can tell that it was all a facade. It was all a, you know, it was an image created by Clive Davis. And Clive Davis, he had this thing where it was his way or the highway, you know? Because he discovered her so young and Whitney Houston was so impressionable. And, you know, you got this big music mogul and basically her career was in the palm of his hands. And it was for many years. He, Whitney Houston was like Clive's Barbie doll. He told her how to dress. He told her how to look, how to do her hair. He told her what song she was going to sing, what melody she was going to sing, what kind of drama she was going to sing, how her album was going to be. He was like the control of everything for her. And it's to the point where if you look at one of those doc, you look at one of those Whitney Houston documentaries, you can see it was like she was tired. She was tired of like living up to that lifestyle, that image she wanted her to be like with the fancy gowns and she was supposed to be America's sweetheart so perfect perfect look perfect voice perfect hair everything you know when mind you behind the scenes even during the height of her career the late 80s early 90s you know she had she was dealing with addiction problems but at that time she was able to hide it other parts you know when she got with Bobby Brown that's when it you know it exploded and later on and through the years it was just, she was just not able to, you know, mask it like she did early in her career. You know, at the height of her career, is, you know, that bodyguard era. If you really look at it, you couldn't really tell Whitney Houston was into all that stuff. But as the years went on, especially towards the late 90s, early 2000s, that's when it became like, wow. And it makes me, it makes you wonder, it's like, if Clive Davis wasn't so controlling, would, would Whitney have been happier? Because it felt like she relied on... You know, she relied on the stuff she was doing, you know, the addiction. I felt like it stemmed from her being unhappy. Like she had to portray this image to the world on stage in music videos and interviews on the red carpets at award shows. But then it's like that image she had to play up to behind the scenes. It just added on to her pressure and her stress. And that made her want to do it even more. That's just that's just my opinion. On it. Like if Whitney Houston was able to be herself, her free self, you know, she didn't have to be such a clean, American, wholesome image like Clive Davis molded her to be. Would she have been so into the addiction? That's a question I raised. And it's another thing because it's like, it was a thing where people felt like Whitney Houston, of course, we all know she could sing. We all know she was one of the greatest singers of all time. One of the best vocalists. But you really look at it, you look at especially like her first three albums, her singles, you know, the songs they chose to be singles, those were amazing but then you listen to the whole album the album cuts most of them were just throwaway tracks she just sounded great singing that's the thing with Whitney Houston because of Clive Davis and he wanted to control what music she sung all the singles they chose were great but when you listen to the actual album most of the album cuts sounded like demos she just sung over and it was just like oh, okay this is good enough just to fill the album up with 12 tracks and it's like wow like that I feel like Whitney's artistic integrity was kind of forced upon by Clive Davis. And that's another thing. If Whitney Houston could really sing the music she wanted to, starting from the beginning of her career, would she have been happier? I think so. Now, fast forward to, you know, unfortunately in 2012, when Whitney Houston passed, I never forget that day. It was a school night for me. I was like a, I was a, I was like a junior in high school. It was a school night for me. And I remember I was in the living room finishing up my homework. My cousin ran into the living room and was like, are they saying Whitney Houston died on Facebook? I was like, what? 
I was like, wait, 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 wait. Like, my whole mind got disoriented. I was like, what? I was like, oh, that's probably a rumor. You know, they just be making up anything. They be trying to kill celebrities every day. But then she was like, no, I'm seeing it on my timeline. So then we turned to CNN. And lo and behold, flash across the screen. You, I turn on the radio. You hear, I remember, I turned on the radio. And as soon as I turned on the radio, I want to dance with somebody who's playing. I was like, that's when it hit me. I said, wow. So fast forward all these years later, it's just like, I feel like Whitney Houston, the thing about her death, I feel like, is we all know she had the addiction problems, right? But I feel like she had too many enablers around her. If Whitney Houston didn't have that many enablers, I feel like she would still be here with us. That's the thing with a lot of celebrities. A lot of celebrities, they have enablers around them. Instead of telling them no, because it's Whitney Houston, they're like, okay, let me just let me just give it to her so she could be happy. You know, I'm working for Whitney Houston. I don't want her to be mad at me. I don't want to get fired. Let me just give her what she wants so I can still keep my job. That's the thing. Even her other family members. And the thing about Whitney Houston, especially now, is her estate. And I feel like, especially Pat Houston, I don't know how. But it seems like Pat Houston bulldozed her way into becoming like the spokesperson for Whitney Houston's estate even more so than her own mother, Sissy Houston. And I'm like, something about Pat Houston never sat well with me. Even all those years later, it's like after, even, even with the death of Bobby Christina, it's like something about Pat Houston never sat well with me. Like she was just so eager to like give the rights for Whitney's image. And like, how did she even get in control of that? She was, she, she was like soon after Whitney died, she was doing interviews with Oprah. She was getting all these talk shows and doing all these different things for Whitney's estate. And it's just like, wow. To me, I feel like Pat Houston is money hungry. She's conniving, she's deceiving, and she has an underlying motive. And I feel like she don't, I feel like she doesn't really care for Whitney's estate like she claims to. She wants that money. She knows Whitney Houston is still a huge commodity and she'll sign and she'll approve anything just to get that Whitney Houston money, you know? Because you really, you look at it, that Whitney Houston hologram, look at this hologram. Do y'all think Whitney Houston would have approved of this? Do y'all really think Whitney Houston would have approved of this? Like, look at this. I, I, I understand, I can see what they was going for, what they was, but do y'all really think Whitney Houston would have approved of this? Really? It's like, wow. I feel like Pat Houston is just doing anything. She's put on this facade like we want Whitney's legacy to always go on, last on, and you know, but it's like with this hologram, no. And that goes into how I felt like Whitney Houston didn't have the right people in her corner. Even all these years later, it's like the people, somehow Pat Houston has been able to bulldoze her way into being in charge of her state. I feel like Whitney Houston deserved better. And she deserved a better team. She deserved better people around her. And if she had that, like I said, I feel like she would still be here. And it makes me wonder, all these years later in 2020, how would Whitney Houston's career played out over these last eight years? Would Whitney have made more money? And you know, it makes me wonder, all these years later in 2020, how would have Whitney Houston's career played out? Would she have made more music? Would she have released more albums? Would she have did a lot of movies? you know, did more tours, which would Whitney Houston have finally got it together as far as like her addiction problems? Would she have got it together and been like, you know, we all saw her struggle, we all saw her battle, but would she, would she have finally got it together and you know, rose above it all? Would she have been able to save Bobby Christina and they would still be alive today? You know what I'm saying? I feel like Whitney Houston, her story, as much success as she had, is just as tragic as it was a success story. And that's the thing with Winnie Houston. But the thing is, Winnie Houston will always be one of the greatest of all time. And nobody can ever erase what she did for the music industry, what she did for the culture, what she did, all the success she had in her career, all the records she broke, all the accolades she achieved. Nobody can ever take that away from her. But I feel like Winnie Houston has so much more to give and she would have lived a better life and she would have lived a happier life if she was able to be more in control of her own career and not having so many enablers and so many people telling her what to do, how to do it, and everything in that matter, you know? So basically, I just wanna know what you guys think. 
What are y'all thoughts about Whitney Houston's career? And have y'all ever seen any documentaries? What did y'all think about, you know, her addiction problems? Do you, what do you think about her enablers? What do you think about the people she had around her? Even now, what are y'all thoughts on Pat Houston and how she's doing her legacy? And, you know, with the hologram and things like that. And how do you think Whitney Houston's career would have played out over the last eight years if she was still here with us? Do you think she would have did more music, more movies? Do you think she would have did more tours? How do you think Whitney Houston would be if she was still alive in 2020 with us right now please leave your comments down below let's get this discussion started don't forget to comment like subscribe and hit the notification bell thanks for watching and listening i'll see y'all in the next video